Wow, I forgot to look up. Did you all look up? Oh, that's why everything was moved around.
Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, welcome to those of you who are watching online. We had a little bit of a glitch, but now we're up and running and all is well. Amen? <laughs> so let us uh, prepare to worship our God. Please stand for the call to worship. Not one stone will be left on stone. Beware that no one leads you astray. When all seems lost, this is just the beginning of the birth pangs. You're invited to sing the hymn that follows. Please be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Faithful God, we gather this day knowing that there have been times when we have been tempted to trust in the ways of this world. Yet, we know that you are faithful, even when we are faithless. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us, convict us, lead us where you would have us to follow. Help our trust to remain steadfast in your love. Amen. Gospel lesson is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Hear the word of the Lord. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, 
And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must be take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Christians, we are people ooh, nice, uh, looking forward to a promise. It need not be a longing for heaven, but more like hoping for the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, just like we pray every week. Part of our worship experience week after week is to open ourselves to the vision God has for all of creation, which includes us. There are times, however, when our daily lives interfere with our Christian journey. Things can get in our way. There can be obstacles that block our path to receive the joy and love God offers us. What might those obstacles be for you? What might weigh you down? What stones are blocking your path? Well, I have some examples. (laughs) Here we go. First of all, this is a Bible that I bought in 1996 at Marshall Fields in Chicago, which now is Macy's. The word of God is steady. It's been here over 2,000 years. It shall not be destroyed. Something that might hold us back or block our path is fear. Fear is very common. It's a a deterrent from putting ourselves out there as Christians. And it's a deterrent sometimes from getting off the fence. For many of us today, COVID is a rock, a stone, a burden that we carry. As I've said many times, there has never been a time like this when we have to continue to praise God and worship God and continue on our path towards God's love and promises as, as we have today. There's never been a time like this, and this pandemic has turned our world upside down. Then, <laughs> so do you know what this is? Oh, you're so good. Division. The word wouldn't fit on here, so this is It seems to me that more and more every day our country is divided. Our families may be divided. Our churches may be divided. It may affect your family with different views and beliefs, drawing a line in the sand, separating family and friends from each other. And the last thing I have today is worth. Often when we look deep down inside ourselves, we find that what's at the bottom 
is that we feel unworthy of God's love and grace. All these obstacles pile up around us and block us in. They block our way towards God's word. We may think we're safe inside these walls of stone. We may even think God's word is only found inside the wall or inside this church. We think we're protecting ourselves from the end times. But just like the temple being built and destroyed, built and destroyed, stone walls will not protect us. The first temple was built in 957 BCE, which is before Common Era. It lasted for 371 years, being destroyed in 586 BCE. The destruction was done by the Babylonians under their king, Nebuchadnezzar II. The second temple was built in 515 BCE. It lasted for 585 years, much longer than the first, and it was destroyed in 70 CE, which is common era. The destruction was done by the Romans in retaliation for an ongoing Jewish revolt. Two temples, so important that they were built and rebuilt three times. Two temples, so important that they were deemed worthy of destruction twice. This glorious man-made structure, uh, the second temple, stood some 15 stories high. It was decorated with gold and served as the symbol of power, strength, and status for so many people of that day. Now, I'm sure there's statistics somewhere that would tell us how many stones it took to build those two temples, but I didn't look it up. I'm sure we can uh, understand that it was l at least a gazillion, right? Well, Jesus knew how many stones were needed and how much work needed to be done to build and rebuild. Yet Jesus said to the disciples who were with him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down, all gazillion of them. The temple did come crashing to the ground. Hundreds of thousands died. This is often what happens to our works that we do with our hand. Temples topple, titanics sink, monuments crumble, our own creations crack and fall. Even the best of what we build in this life is susceptible to the elements and in time prove only to be temporary. This church building with the newly painted ceiling and walls, yay, uh, has been here since the late 19th century. Now in the 21st century, it remains the focus of our community of faith. But 20 months ago, we stepped out of this building because of COVID-19. Would we have been out of the building forever? No, but we didn't know that. Who knows? Was it the end of the world? No. Also, it was not the end of our relationship with God. God was and is with us here and at home through digital worship and the Holy Spirit inspired new people to seek out this church online. Thank you, those are, who are watching. You can imagine the disappointment the disciples felt when Jesus you know, Jesus didn't share their enthusiasm over this grand temple with the gold and 
and stone and mortar. He didn't share their love of the architecture and design. He didn't like what, what it meant, the symbolism of the state and religious power. He just seemed to brush it off with the word, do you see these buildings? They're going to be gone before you know it. So what was it that those disciples should have been doing? What is it that we should be doing? Paying attention. Paying attention to what is going on around us and what is coming down the road, not in fear, but in faith. Jesus tells the disciples that they need to see, what they need to see is the long view, to look beyond this current situation, the good or the bad. We also need to look beyond this current situation, the good and the bad, the things that we might not like to have going on right now, the things that's, that um, cause disasters and death. But because this isn't all that there is, whatever this might be for you right now, it doesn't define who you are and who you will be. There is more to come. A world that you can barely imagine. You can only glimpse it for a second right now the kingdom of God. There is more to come for those of us here in 2021. There has been destruction in our world over the past, past 18 months. Hundreds of thousands have died. But Jesus would say, this isn't all there is. There's more good to come. God's promises to us are coming. Yes, Jesus lists the bad that will come as well, like the earthquakes and the wars, king, kingdom against kingdom, and famines. <clears throat> so Jesus tells the disciples, and all of us now, watch out whom you follow. Watch out whom you hitch your hopes to. There are some who might seem to have all the answers, those who offer you a better tomorrow than you can find today, a place where masks aren't worn and food is served inside. There are many who will gladly take on all followers, and there are those who will accept the mantle of leadership who are in it only for themselves. Beware and be aware. Watch who you follow. Avoid taking a big detour off your road to salvation. Then, when stuff happens, like all the things uh, Jesus said in this passage, uh, it might seem like the end. It might seem like the collapse of civilization as we know it. And there are people who keep predicting, well, the end of the world is coming. There's these earthquakes and there's these storms and tsunami and uh, the COVID disease and the wars and the it might seem like the overthrow of all that is right and good is happening right now. It might seem like the end of all that we know and love but says Jesus we're just getting started we're just getting started and going forward to the end times when God, God's kingdom will come here on earth, when Jesus will come again. There are times when what we have built just has to be destroyed so we can move forward and create new life. I don't knit, but I imagine when the yarn gets too tangled or you drop a stitch you might not be able to just pick that stitch up and put it back in. The whole thing must be destroyed and built again. 
sometimes that's necessary. We as disciples need to take the long view, not to get caught in the moment. Yes, we can and need to appreciate every moment of grace and every act of love and service that comes our way. But we can't lose the greater vision, God's kingdom that is coming, God's kingdom that is here and not yet. Jesus doesn't present this to the disciples to scare them, but to help them keep things in proper perspective. And we're called to do the same. The Jews in 70 CE were devastated that their temple was a pile of stone. Where would they worship? Then what they began what is now called synagogue worship. In 2020, we were devastated that we could not worship in our church. How would we reach the people? How would we support each other? Then we began what is now live streaming worship, and we're still doing it. And God was and is still with those Jews. And God was and is still with First United Methodist Church of Mays Landing. We can't get wrapped up in the stones we have built or the stones that others have torn down. The life that matters is a life that takes the long view and holds on to hope that indeed God has the whole world in God's hands. God is always about the business of making new, new life, new future, new possibilities. Whenever we hear reports of disaster, if we turn to Mark chapter 13, we will be reminded to not be led astray, to, to not be following pretenders that cannot save us. Rather, we look to Jesus in those times. In Jesus, by his sacrifice, he can take away our fear. By God, by God's grace, our unworthiness will be destroyed. And it's the Holy Spirit who remains with us through this COVID pandemic. And it is the unity of God, our creator, Jesus, our savior, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter, that will build us back up and unify us rather than be divided. All those stones, not once, all those stones will fall, not one stone will remain, and God's word will always be here to guide us. In the end, what will matter most is what we did with our lives, how we loved and whom we served and how we overcame the obstacles or the stones in the way. Life is less about building monuments or buildings that will try to stand for all time. Life is more about how we overcome obstacles that separate us from moving with God throughout our lives. This week, be aware of the stones that weigh you down and beware of people who try to convince you to follow others. Beware and remember, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down and God's word will remain. Your path will be made clear when you give your life to God this day and every day. Praise be to God. 
Amen. Just a reminder that if you have your estimate of giving card uh, and you haven't turned it in, please do so as soon as you can. Uh, and know, always know, that if things change, that can also be changed. So we come today and give of our time, our talents, and our treasure. And so we give God thanks that we have those gifts to give. Join me in the offering prayer. Almighty God, architect of the universe, your work of creation and building is always before us. We give our gifts this day in hopes that we may be co-builders with you in the creation of your kingdom here on earth. May our gifts also reach others who are hurting, who feel disconnected from your love, that they too may join us in the stonework of kingdom building, whose mortar is the sharing of Christ's love with the world. In Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. So there are uh, some new prayer requests since last, uh, last week. Uh, with COVID, we pray for Jean and those with cancer, Glenn Aspenberg, George Chapman, and we continue to ca pray for Kathy Dunn, for Barbara Jansen, Bruce Schneider, Duke Dowdy, Marie Carr, Pat 
Patricia and Patrick Pantoliano and Gloria. Those who are especially in need of uh, healing prayer today are Michael D'Angelo, uh, who had some surgery. We pray for um, Karen Kramer and her newborn child for their healing. We pray for the mainland high school student who was killed in a car crash, or hit by a car uh, in front of the school. We pray for Carol Kisby, for Nina Hartman, and Robert Young's procedure is this Tuesday, so keep him in, in prayer. And we pray for um, those who, who have undergone, tr undergone treatment and continue to need healing. And we are especially grateful that Rosemary is here with us. We'll continue to pray for your continued healing. And so, uh, oh, and a celebration. George Reichert, okay, just a minute, um, had been in two and a half months in rehab. This is Pat Strobel's brother. He is now home and doing much better. Audrey? Okay, let us pray for George Fye who has COVID and has been almost two weeks in the hospital. Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, we bow, humbly bow before you and we give thanks for the fact that you, you know our prayers, what's in our hearts already, but we give you thanks that we can come to you and ask for things so that we can help others, we can help ourselves grow closer to you. I bring your people before you. I plead on their behalf Bring healing to those who are sick. Bring peace to those who are afraid. Bring faith to those who face discouragement or carry fear or unworthiness. Bring joy to those who face sorrow. You know all that we face, so we give you our cries and our concerns. We give you our uh, joys as well. Thank you for loving us and knowing us so deeply. We love you as well. We give thanks to you, our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, uh, we have grocery cards uh, available. Linda's not here, but you could call her and make arrangements. Um, she's around. And Sunday school continues to need uh, extra help so that not one person has to do this every single week. So, yay! Deck the halls. Let's join together to deck the halls as we prepare for the birth of Christ. Uh, we will meet Saturday, November 27th at 9 o'clock. So all the elves that can come would be really appreciated. 
Uh, we also on November 30th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, there will be a special charge conference brought to us by the Greater New Jersey Conference uh, in regards to the Boy Scouts of America and their um, legal things that are happening. There's a paper that we need to approve and sign uh, if there's a possibility that we have a claim. So, um, hmm, I'll get you that information how to get on to the Zoom. And the, uh, Nina and Linda want to thank all of you who have sent cards and all of us who have prayed in the past few weeks. They so appreciate it. And lastly, the UMW Well, you can read that while I'm <laughs> going on. Thank you. To, uh, the UMW thanks uh, a person or a family or someone who donated to them um, anonymously um, so that the United Methodist Women can continue. And so they appreciate this generous donation. Okay. If you are able and willing, please rise for the benediction. Having come here, laid down our burdens before God, let us leave them here and go into the world to love and serve our God. Amen.